What's going on, everybody? Oscar back. Uh, I felt like doing things a little bit differently this time. As you can see, my lighting is kind of... Is, is pretty much, for the most part, not really the typical lighting that I do on this channel. So today, I want to do a video that I... That is about a series that I've recently started reading, and you've seen this on my last haul video that I did, which was my August, which was what, my July-August haul video. So I wanted to talk about the series, I've read the first two volumes of it. Um, I do like that this, while this is essentially a power fantasy, it isn't, you know, that kind of a power fantasy, and this gets pretty dark pretty quick, and I really like that this this creator um it's based on a novel series that was turned into a manhwa and manhwa is pretty much like the korean version of like uh like you know japan with like um with manga and stuff and yeah, and koreans have uh manhwa which i'm really uh trying to get into like i have tower of god the the manhwa for tower of god pre-ordered uh both fizz both uh hardcover and paperback because i ran into this thing i think it's ships from udon entertainment and i had this thing with udon where they were going to ship me hardcovers of or a bunch of people as well they're going to ship hardcovers of summertime rendering and then they never shipped them and i think it's right now slated for like a um for like a december drop or whatever and it's kind of wild but i ended up getting my hands on the physical copy on the uh paperbacks for summertime rendering and i have them behind me and I actually did a video about summertime rendering and i don't know what's gonna happen with tower of god and i ordered both i ordered both the hardcover and the the paperbacks of of the first volume of tower of god so hopefully those ship and there aren't any any issues and maybe i'll do a video about about tower of god eventually but what i actually want to talk to you all about today is solo leveling this is a first for me on the channel i don't think i've as yet dedicated a whole video to a power fantasy however if we're going to start anywhere this is the place to do it not just that this is the first manhwa we've done on this channel and the first manhwa i've read so far so this is definitely a series of firsts and with all that said let's get this underway solo leveling started out as a novel series written by chu gong i also apologize up front for any and all korean names i'm about to butcher it began writing in 2014 and saw serialization in 2018 and then the manhwa came out in september of 2019 i'd heard of this story as early as 2020 but it never really piqued my interest. There were already tons of other power fantasy stories flooding the market, and I was burned out on the genre as a whole. Then this year, 2022, I decided to give this series a shot, and bought the first three volumes back to back, tore through volume 1, and jumped immediately into volume 2. I ended up really enjoying the dynamics of this story and this series, so let's get into it. Let's break down solo leveling. Our lead character is a dude named Sung Jin Woo. He is the worst combatant ever, to the point anytime he joins a raid, the other members of the party already know it's going to be a cakewalk. He's weak and basically useless, but he has true grit, especially since this is starting off like every power fantasy ever. Except, wait for it, it pulls a 180. Instead of this dude becoming Mr. Let's Save Everybody and No One Dies Ever, he becomes pretty brutal and violent. This right here sold me 100%. There is even a Frederick Nietzsche quote that I'm pretty certain foreshadows where Jin Wu is headed if his ambitions go unchecked. He who fights with monsters might take care lest he thereby become a monster, and if you gaze for long into an abyss, the abyss gazes also into you. Slight spoiler, Jin Wu has no problem taking human life if that person is out to take his. I've watched several power fantasies and I can't remember one where Protagoon committed murder and then has his friends cover up said murder. You could say Overlord, but that is right off the bat villainous. Same with Saga of Tanya the Evil. I'm talking isekai power fantasies where our lead is supposed to be a good person. However, this is still an isekai of sorts, and people reading it already know what they're getting themselves into. It's the reason they're reading it in the first place. Jin Woo eats dirt for almost the whole first volume, 
and it isn't even until Volume 3 that his metamorphosis really begins to take hold. Volume 2 is him still figuring his powers out and to what extent he can use them. Then Volume 3 feels more like, alright, I'm strong as shit, let's fuck things up. The progression versus instantly being able to do everything is something I personally respect about this story. This dude eats shit, then gets back up and tries again. He knows his limits, and despite wanting to test them, he stays his hand, knowing he can always come back when he's better equipped to handle the challenge. The surrounding characters aren't terrible, but I couldn't care less about them. They're not really all that interesting. The only one that piqued my curiosity is an assassin hunter, a licensed dude who couldn't give the slightest care about human life. I think those will be the most entertaining characters in this series. The villains. Like other series in this vein, SAO, that time I got reincarnated as a slime, overlord, and so on, Jinwoo can see his stats and the stats of his party, and even the people and monsters he'll face in battle. I've been a huge RPG player for years, so that instantly gets me pumped in solo leveling. Seeing Jin Wu's stats climb as he becomes stronger reminded me of the countless hours I spent grinding games like Skyrim and Elden Ring, the latter of which I got the Platinum Trophy for on PlayStation. There is nowhere for Jin Wu to go from here but up. I just hope his rise doesn't come with an eventual, brutally vicious fall. So I hope that this works. This whole setup that I have right now, I hope it works with the lights. I've got one light that's super blue over here and then one that's like really yellow over here. I just wanted to do things a little bit differently, kind of create uh, an aura, I guess if you will, like contrasting you know, colors and I hope that it does work. I've been watching this show called Euphoria and I've been really into it. Like I watched pretty much season one and two just back to back and I watched it probably in like the course of a week just every day I'd, when I get out of work I would just come home and watch Euphoria and I loved I couldn't get into like the first episode the pilot episode I thought the pilot was kind of weak and I was just like yeah, this is pretty much just like about like like Gen Z and I couldn't really connect to it because I'm a millennial and I was just kind of like, eh, you know, but then as it went going, as it kept going, you know, as like the, the episodes kept on, it actually got really good. And that's actually become one of my favorite shows right now. And one of my favorite characters on that show is a character named Jules, who is a trans woman. And yeah, I loved, I loved that show, the characters in it, everybody involved in it does such a great job. And it definitely made me want to kind of mess around with, with colors because I think that show has like a great color scheme, you know, and Another one of my favorite characters is this dude. Um, God, I'll put it. I'll put the character here somewhere, but I can't remember his name off the top of my head right now. But he was one of my favorite characters. Fesco. That was his name, Fesco. He's one of my favorite characters in that that show, and it kind of reminded me of like my love of like Korean type cinema and Korean films and whatnot. And that's the thing. Some of the best films and some of the best media are Korean. You know, despite you know Korean just having like like a lot of like 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 soap opera type stuff like their films are really incredible like like pretty much anything by park chan wook is essentially a fucking masterpiece like everything that dude does is so on point like one of my favorite park chan wook movies is thirst he also did the revenge trilogy uh the sympathy movies uh sympathy for mr vengeance sympathy for lady vengeance and old boy and my favorite of those being sympathy for mr vengeance which is just ruthless it's so brutal dude and there's probably a bunch of people that like really weren't familiar with you know like korean cinema up until like parasite dropped by uh bong bong joon ho i think that's what his name is but he also did um memories of murder which is a phenomenal film if you've never seen memories of murder definitely check that out i won't say anything because i don't want to spoil that film but yeah it was incredible and really great cast of characters there's a dude in there who like he he's like a frequent collaborator of his and they, they work a lot together is it song song something um yeah i can't remember their names off the top of my head like just i did this kind of impromptu i should have you know kind of done a little bit more research before sitting down and talking about these films and these and, and directors you know these korean directors but but yeah i'm a big appreciator of like korean cinema i've enjoyed a lot of korean films over the years, The Host is another one that's really good. Um, 
Pretty much, yeah. Just like like the the the, the films, the the series, the, the the drama films. You know, I've never really watched like Korean series because I feel like they're kind of they're they're kind of cheesy to me. They feel like they're kind of corny, like they're kind of over the top, which is like such a contrast to you know how well made the films are. It's funny that I say that because like I I loved Squid Game. I thought Squid Game was really well done and I thought it was a great series. And I'm excited for season two. Like such so well acted, really well directed. It never felt at any point in time to me like it was falling off or like anything was super over the top. And even for like that story's world, it was pretty grounded in the reality that they created within that world. Even when it started to get a little more outrageous towards the end of the series, I felt like they gave it a pretty good um, like grounded ending. Even though I'm not really sure the uh, the decisions made at the end were maybe possibly the best decisions but without those decisions there wouldn't be you know a season two coming up so i'm curious as to where that's going to go and if you've never seen um battle royale which is a japanese film i highly recommend that as well as like uh suicide circle suicide circle or suicide club whichever one it goes by ichi the killer these are all uh japanese films but these are vibes that like, I kind of get from these sorts of media, which is like really dark and really, really brutal. And I especially like really highly recommend like Battle Royale and like Suicide Club. Suicide Club because I don't think a lot of people even know that it exists and it is one of the darkest, most brutal films I've ever seen. And yeah, there's, there's a lot of really good cinema out there, you know, that comes out of like Korea and comes out of like Japan and whatnot. And I just really, I'm a big fan of like Asian horror. As you can tell, I have like a massive Junji Ito shrine up there. That's all my Junji Ito volumes. And then you got, um, you've got an alien in the middle and then you've got Bulma on one side and Android 18 on the other side, kind of, you know, presenting, presenting the Ito manga and yeah, I mean, I'm trying to get into a bunch of different stuff, and I've been getting into manhwa. This is the first manhwa that I've ever actually read. I've never read manhwa before, and I got into solo leveling, so I've been reading this series, and I'm in the middle of Volume 3, and I'm excited to see where where this series is going to go, because where we're at right now in Volume 3, it has gotten pretty intense, and I love the feeling of it like this dude had goes through this whole arc where he kind of in my opinion starts to turn into jason from from far cry 3 and if you've ever played far cry 3 and you get to like the latter half of the story there's something that happens with him where like he kind of contemplates the things that he's done i kind of like that this dude is doing that where like he's contemplating the things that he is doing and the things that he's done and i won't get into specifics or anything but i like that there may be some like ptsd element or something you know going on and to me that that sets it alone that alone sets it apart from pretty much every other power fantasy out there where like these dudes just suddenly become super powerful and they don't they no longer have like they become pretty much like your typical dude in a power fantasy and this is not your typical dude in a power fantasy you know he goes through changes that a lot of those dudes don't go through you know and they still remain clueless fucking idiots which is my biggest thing with a lot of isekai and this is kind of like a reverse isekai but yeah i'm excited for this um tower of god i have i have uh, pre-ordered i think it comes out in, like november so i should have my hands on the mount the manhwa for tower of god and i also have the breaker manhwa on the way so i should hopefully have my hands on that soon in the next week or so i should have the breaker so once i get my hands on the breaker i'll have volumes one through three on the way to, to me so once i get those i'm gonna do a video about about uh the breaker so yeah look out for that and just want to say thank you so much for hanging out with me my name is oscar please take care of yourselves until next time we meet